In this video, I'm going to show you that in 30 minutes or less, we can install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi and integrate it with SmartThings, making SmartThings smarter. If you're running SmartThings today and you're thinking about trying Home Assistant or you're thinking about migrating to Home Assistant in the future, stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Slager Labs. If this is your first time here, my name is Jeff. And here at Slacker Labs, we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using Home Assistant and Smart Home Tech. This week, I wanted to talk getting started with Home Assistant. It's a topic I really haven't covered yet. And while there are a lot of videos out there on getting started with Home Assistant, I think most of them miss the easy button method. Those of us that are Home Assistant fanboys love to talk about the fact that Home Assistant allows you to keep everything local, or that you can write really complex automations, or even that if you're willing to flash custom firmware on IoT devices, you could open up integrations that aren't possible with off-the-shelf devices. But the reality is, when most people are getting started with home automation, those things aren't even a concern. Heck, those things weren't even on my wish list for a smart home when I got started. I just wanted the porch lights to come on at sunset and turn off at sunrise. And if that's your goal, SmartThings is a pretty good choice. In fact, according to Samsung's CEO at the Consumer Electronics Show in 2020, SmartThings had 52 million active users. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but given how easy it is to get started with the platform, I think that's a pretty good bet. SmartThings was the home automation platform I got started with back in early 2014, and it did everything I needed for about six months. When I got serious about building a smart home, it just didn't have a way for me to write the kind of automations and decision logic that I wanted. So I moved to Home Assistant. Now, the purpose of this video is not to convince you that you need Home Assistant. Although, if you want to build a smart home, I think you need Home Assistant. The purpose of this video is to convince you that if you're using SmartThings today and you're curious about what Home Assistant can do for your smart home, then it may be easier than you think to try it out. And if you keep watching, I'll show you how. Okay, there are a lot of ways to get started with Home Assistant. It is a choose your own smart home adventure after all. but. For this video, we're going to keep things simple. All you need is a Raspberry Pi, an SD card, and some files from the internet. You can grab a Raspberry Pi for as little as $55 off of Amazon, but I suggest getting a kit that comes with a power supply, a case, and the Raspberry Pi, and they typically run somewhere close to $89 to $100. Next, you're going to need an SD card. Application Class 2 is the best choice here, and a 64 gigabyte one will probably set you back around $15. But if you think you're going to store media on your Home Assistant instance, then you might want to look at a bigger card. I've heard some people say that they've had issues with the SD cards getting corrupted, and it's always followed with the advice to go with an SSD instead of the SD card, which isn't as simple as just plugging an SSD into the Raspberry Pi. Personally, I used the same SD card in my Raspberry Pi for three years without issues. If the SD card concerns you, you can always boot from an SSD. But in the name of keeping things simple, we're going to stick with the SD card for this video. I'll include links to the official getting started guide in case you want to explore other options for installing Home Assistant. If you choose one of those other methods, just be sure to come back here when you start to boot up and skip to the first boot section. Now, for those of you sticking around for this party, it's time for the flashing. In order to flash, we need the Home Assistant image. This file is the OS and Home Assistant all in one. Head over to homeassistant.io and click on getting started. Since I'm using an old Raspberry Pi 3, I'm using that file, but if you have a Raspberry Pi 4, just make sure you grab the correct image for your device. Once that is downloaded, we will need to flash it to an SD card. Etcher is a good choice. I'll put a link to it in the description. It's free and it has clients for Mac, Windows, and Linux. If you're downloading this to install on a different system, click the arrow and choose your platform. Otherwise, just click the download button. On a Mac, just open the file you downloaded and drag it to your application folder. When you fire it up, it will look like this. First, we need to pick the image that we want to use. Then we pick the SD card we want to flash. Then just click flash. You may get prompted for your password since we're formatting the drive, so just follow the prompts. If you're new to this kind of flashing, what is happening is Etcher is basically copying the file we downloaded to our SD card in a way that the Raspberry Pi will understand it. Once the flash is complete, it's time to boot up our Raspberry Pi. 
Just slip the SD card into the Raspberry Pi. I suggest connecting it to Ethernet to start and fire it up. While it's possible to use wireless, for this I would go with a hard line just to make sure that there are no connectivity issues. If you want to go the Wi-Fi route, follow the link in the description. After a couple of minutes, you'll get this lovely screen. On a Raspberry Pi 3, it'll probably take you pretty close to 20 minutes to complete this first boot. On a Raspberry Pi 4, the time is maybe half that. While we wait for this, I want to take a moment to say if you haven't subscribed to my channel, it's free, so the only cost is clicking that button. Also, any of the links to Amazon in the description of this video are Amazon affiliate links, which pay me a very small commission at no cost to you. I use the money from that to buy hardware to review and to find new ways to automate the boring stuff, so I can come back and give you the details. If you need some hardware, using those links would be very much appreciated. Okay, this is going to be boring, so we'll skip ahead. Alright, first boot is done. First task is creating a user. This will be your admin user, so make the password strong and click create user. Next up, you can name your install. You could leave it home or name it something more unique to you. You could also put in your location, time zone, elevation, and whether you want to use metric or be a heathen like me and use imperial. I'm just going to leave everything as default for now and click next. You can change this later. If Home Assistant finds any devices or known integrations on your network, you can set them up now. I always skip this though and do it later. Click finish. And now we're done. Home Assistant is up and running. Of course, there's lots of stuff to do, but before you start chasing squirrels, let's finish what we came here to do, integrate smart things. In order to do that, we're going to need to have our Home Assistant exposed to the internet and have SSL set up. If that is something you want to do, I'll put a link to a guide that walks you through setting that up. However, there's an easier way. Home Assistant offers a cloud service called Nabucasa. And the whole purpose of this service is to provide you with an endpoint to your Home Assistant instance that you can access from anywhere in the world and you don't have to manage ports or SSL certs. Nothing in Home Assistant ends up in the Nabucasa cloud, and the connection back to your instance is encrypted. The service costs $5 a month, and this covers the cost of the infrastructure and supports the development of Home Assistant. You don't need the cloud service to do a lot of this, but it does make things easier, and you get the first 30 days to try it out, which is what we're going to use for this video. To get started with Nabucasa, head over to Configuration and then click on Home Assistant Cloud. Click Start your free one month trial. And best of all, no payment information is required. So after the trial, this is not an auto enrollment into a longer subscription, but an opt in as all trials should be. Just add your email and a password. And this is not tied to your Home Assistant user, so it can be different. Then you will need to activate your account via a link and an email. Once activated, head back and log in. If you do not see the state as connected, wait a few minutes and hit refresh. You will want to make sure remote control is enabled before you continue, otherwise the integration may not be able to connect. Oh, and this URL here is what you could use to reach your instance from anywhere in the world. Okay, smart things integration time. Head over to the configuration and integrations. Click the add integration button and search for smart things. Nothing to do here, but make sure this URL is accessible and hit submit. Now we need a token from smart things. Click the link to personal access tokens which will take you to SmartThings. You will need to log in with your Samsung account and then you should end up here. I already have a token that my other instance has used in the past, but I'll generate a new one for this test instance. Give the token a name and select all the scopes you want Home Assistant to access. Then generate token. Be sure to copy the token it gives you before you leave this page. And don't bother copying this one. It's already destroyed, as is the Nabucasa account used to do the setup. Paste your token into the integration and click Submit. If all works, you will be able to pick the name of your SmartThings location you want to integrate. And then we have to allow access. Click Done. Then click Allow. And then we can close this window. Back in Home Assistant, we see some devices. Click Finish. Let's check out what we can do. In my SmartThings, I have two Cree bulbs I've added, and you can see Home Assistant sees them as well. Let's add them to the Lovelace UI. Since we haven't done anything with the default UI, it will say that we will have to take control. And now let's do a little test. Here's the SmartThings app on my phone. You can see the two Cree bulbs. Now, when we turn Cree 1 on in Home Assistant, SmartThings sees the state change. Same for Cree 2. Not only that, the sync is fast. And when we turn them off on the SmartThings app, Home Assistant syncs the state change. And that's all there is to it. Now, as we add devices in SmartThings, they will sync with Home Assistant, and we can start using these devices in our automations and scripts. This is exactly how I got started with Home Assistant, and it allowed me to take my time and learn the Home Assistant platform without disrupting anything I had set up in SmartThings. Which, if you're in the same boat, can get you out of having to worry about that horribly named wife acceptance factor, which 
If that's a concern, you may need to rethink how you're building your smart home. But I'll save that rant for another video. The bottom line is running the two platforms side by side worked so well that until the fall of 2019, SmartThings was my device hub and Home Assistant handled my automations and was the main interface for my smart home. It's not perfect and you still have cloud dependencies, but it's a pretty easy way to get started with Home Assistant. And that's it. In just a short period of time, we've installed Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi and integrated it with SmartThings. Where you go from here depends on your vision of a smart home. But if you're looking for other ideas, check out some of my other videos on Home Assistant. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button so I know it wasn't all bad and consider subscribing to my channel for more home automation content. It's free, which means you don't have to give up that prized subscription to your favorite channel just to add mine. If I got something wrong or you have questions about something I said, let me know in the comments or hit me up on Twitter at the Jeffrey Stone. And as always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff. <laughs>